Welcome to our practice session for principles of micro. So this is for the practice for midterm two. So I gave you the directions, what you want to do in the practice session and also on the exam is just type the letter of the correct answer. So for this one, according to the law of demand, if price goes up, quite man is going to fall. So just type the letter B and that's it. So let's the directions. Let's get started on some of the questions. So question number one, if a company pollutes and transaction costs are high, which of the five makes most economic sense? So you can rule out A immediately. A is talking about the Coase theorem, and the Coase theorem says that the people can negotiate, they can reach the efficient outcomes if transaction costs are low. Here, however, Transaction costs are high, so that doesn't apply. We also said that in competitive markets, there's going to be too much pollution, so just letting a company pollute is not right either. We also said that having zero pollution is also inefficient. So last one would be choice C. So now the company is liable for the damage it causes. That's going to cause them to internalize the externality that has to take into consideration the harm they're doing when they are making their production decisions. So for that one, you just type the letter C for number one. Let's move on to look at number two. So it says that digital media distributed over the internet often have zero marginal costs. So does that mean we have economies of scale or diseconomies of scale? That would be economies of scale. That means that average costs are declining. I should say I'm more precisely average total costs. So you produce a larger and larger quantity when you're selling more and more of these songs to more users, then your total cost is not changing. The marginal cost is zero, but total cost gets divided by a bigger and bigger quantity, so that's going to cause it to go down. All right, moving on to number three. So we have a loss of 5000 per year in a perfectly competitive market. The fixed costs are 8000 per year. So in the short run, should we shut down? The answer is going to be no. So you just type B. So why is that true? Well, remember, you still appear your fixed costs in the short run, even if you shut down. So if you shut down, you get no revenue, but you still have those fixed costs of 8,000 per year. So probably it's going to be minus 8,000 in that case. If you don't shut down, you do what you're currently doing, they get loss of 5,000. So profit is minus 5,000. That's bad, but it's not quite as bad as what happens if you shut down. So don't shut down. Question four, I see about the same scenario. This asks about the long run. Number three is about the short run. Now in the long run, we said there are no fixed costs. One way example is that if you have a space in the mall, you gotta pay your rent whether or not you sell anything. In the long run though, your lease expires and you're not locked into that anymore. So in the long run, the firm should exit the market because in that case, probably zero. So that's number four. All right, one more question on the same theme. So we still have the loss of 5,000 per year, but this time we're gonna change the firm's fixed cost to just 2,000. In the short run, 
should the firm shut down? So if you shut down, you're going to pay your fixed costs still, but you get no revenue. So probably it's going to be negative 2,000 in this case. If you don't shut down, then you keep following the same plan and profit is minus 5,000. Well, in this case, shutting down is now worse, sorry, shutting down is not as bad as staying open. So in this case, it is better to shut down. So you want to put choice A in there. So just for some bonus review, we had this rule in the short run and the long run for shutdown and exit. We said if price is less than average variable cost, that's when you want to, in the short run, shut down. That would mean that the revenue per unit is less than the variable cost per unit. So your fixed costs are things you can't change in the short run. So that's true, then same risk is just make your problem even worse. In the long run, we said the rule was you want to leave the market if price or revenue per unit is less than average cost per unit. Because <clears throat> that imply your profit's negative and if there's free entry and exit, it's better to get zero than get something negative long term. So that wraps up number five. All right, number six. So we had these three potential demand curves in a market that was monopolistically competitive. So it says, actually give you a hint here, monopolistic competition, you get zero profits in the long run. So that means that demand, which gives you price, has to be equal to average total cost. Now, all three of these curves have a point where, the, where demand is equal to average total cost, but only one of them is satisfactory for long-run monopolistic competition. You can rule out D3 here because for a monopolistic competition, the firm's demand curve that it faces is downward sloping. Demand is flat only for perfect competition, not for a monopolistic competition. For demand curve D2, we know that can't be right because for some points along demand curve D2, like around here, it's going to be price above average total cost. That means that the firm can make a profit in this area that's positive. That can't be right because under monopolistic competition, there are zero economic profits in the long run. The one curve we said is acceptable would be D1 because that one is tangent to average total cost. We had a slide back in the relevant chapter that showed you had to have tangency. So D1 is choice A, so your answer would be just A. All right, very last question. We're trying to find a monopolist price, maximizing price and quantity. So here's demand, here's marginal cost. Remember the rule for monopolist is you have to have marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. <coughs> so we said before that marginal revenue is the same intercept as demand. Intercept here is 50, but it has double the slope. So instead that being minus 5q, it's now going to be minus 10q. So MR equals MC. Oops is going to imply that we had um, 50 minus 10q equal to 15q. So that means that 50 equals 25q, which means that q is going to be 2. If you plug q equals 2 back into demand, that becomes 50 minus 5 times 2 which comes out to 40. So I have a price of 40 and a quantity of two. That corresponds to choice C over here. 
So your answer is C. So that wraps up our practice session. So stay healthy out there and best of luck on midterm two.